You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. This is Nikki. And this is John of Hook Like Helen. And you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod. I like that. A.K.A. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome John and Nikki Stipp. They are from Hooked Like Helen. And they have released their new single entitled Fraud. And that's out right now. Also, they have another single that was released back in May called Sleepwalker. And we're going to dive into this and uh, see what's going on with this uh, couple here. So, how are you guys doing? Welcome to the podcast. Good, man. Thanks for having us. It's a hell of an intro. I appreciate that. And it was perfect, too. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) So this is strangely enough, but this is how the matchmaking goes. Sometimes you met through a family friend. Did you both ever imagine the road that it would take you on and lead you to music? No. No. Hell no. Like we, I mean, we, I joined the band that he was in because of a friend of mine named Helen, which is how the band got the name. Um, So we were in a band together before we started dating for a couple of years. Um, But like never in my wildest dreams did I think that it was going to take the path that it took and that we were going to be out here almost 10 years married. Um, It'll be 10 years married in November. Never in my wildest dreams were we ever going to be dating in the band. Right. Yeah. And then just to have our own project, something else, doing all these things, getting a tour, still releasing music. I mean, with a 10 year old boy at home. Um, in Ohio now. That's in rough. Ohio, I never thought that was going to happen. We were out in she LA. She didn't even know where Ohio was. I didn't know where it was on a map because when you're in LA, I grew up just north of LA, just in she California. She's brilliant, but she did not know where Ohio was. Well, because it's like you know what California is, and you know where Florida is, and you know where Texas is, and you know <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> California girl. But I'm better now. <laughs> But that's got to be rough on you two with different musical influences and plus holding a relationship down, not knowing if it's going to affect the band, not knowing how this shit's going to end up. But luckily enough, look where it's brought you all at. We do feel lucky. I mean, we've had some chaos and there are times when it is still chaotic. We're but both crazy in the we're both crazy. right way. Well, we, I mean, you know, we're still, <laughs> all, it must be the right all way. All music, all musicians are crazy. I feel like every, all, are a little you know what i mean who's normal there's no i agree there's no normal person i'm yes. not normal. <laughs> no, no good one is. no one is <laughs> you can admit it we can you know those of us that can admit it yeah. um but we still we still have our chaos and stuff but i do think it's working out so we're thankful how excited are you both to have the new single fraud out now and has it has it met your expectations so far we're excited and yes Um, it was a song that we started playing when we were on our first tour, our first national tour, which was just this past April and May. And we started playing it in our set and the fans were digging it. Um, they were kind of vibing on the more aggressive, heavier, faster kind of vibe and the message of it. I feel like a lot of people can kind of relate to having someone in their life who is just full of shit and not who they said they were and maybe a narcissist or whatever. Well, that's how she introed the song. And then we start rocking and it went over really well. Yep. And so when we were kind of crowdsourcing and being like, what, you know, what do y'all want to hear from us? What should we release next? That was one of the ones that came up. So um, it's just been kind of a cool journey for everybody to kind of come along with us and us to, you know, change some things up for the, for the recorded version, et cetera, and then put it out and then get the feedback and, you know, people are like, yep, I definitely have experienced what this song is about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like oh, many of us have. So unfortunately. Right. But seeing that response of everybody liking the heavier version of, of this song, 
is that going to lead you down that path to say, hey, we need to be a little bit more heavier since, you know, you're getting that good response from it because a lot of people like heavy, heavy stuff. Right. It's true, dude. Yes. It's um, true. It's kind of interesting. It's like when we first started out with this project with Hooked Like Helen, it was um, because we were out here in the woods of Ohio and we weren't in a big major music city anymore. We were focusing on just our honing our skills to record at home and to try to um, pitch songs for like film and television. And so a lot of how our sound kind of took its path, you know, musically genre wise was based on the type of TV shows and the types of scenes that the songs were being placed in or, or custom written for. So it was kind of like not necessarily up to us that what was, was unfolding that was genre the best, wise best way to get out there yeah and it was still like there. a very satisfying thing to do and it's still our art and everything that we that you know we are still proud of and appreciate and everything but once you start kind of playing live and doing the music that you want to do in the way you want to do it um and not necessarily like for the vision of a director um it kind of things opened up and so we love doing the heavier stuff live. I mean, not, not heavy, you know what I mean? Like we're not, I, I would never claim to be metal or anything like that. Not, not that we don't like that stuff we do, but I, that's just not where we're at. But like, as far as heavier than stuff in the past, we're having a lot of fun. We're very high energy live, like us and our, we have a guitar player named Connor and a drummer named Heather who play with us live when we tour. And like, we're all just kind of nuts. Even so, if we're not like, I mean, Fraud is probably the heaviest song we have. Fraud and Sleepwalker is heavy, but it's also like a ballad type. But it is heavy, I'd say, I guess. Um, that's, I mean, that's not necessarily true. That Songs that are not released yet that we're playing live are heavy. But here's what I'm saying is I like to think that we could play with heavier bands and, oh, still, sure. and still get the respect of the heavy, heavier crowd. You know what I mean? Because we oh, have... Man we have a lot in common and i just think that like what those fans are looking for and what they want to feel you know what i mean i think we still bring that in our own way and why couldn't you guys be on those those festivals that i see every single year i mean there's there's some bands that doesn't make sense being on there but hell you yeah guys, you guys would make sense being on these festivals that are out there thank you, thank I, you. I appreciate that let's manifest that yeah, i like that there's a lot of them out there that i see that i'm like you know we might not necessarily be the heaviest band on that bill but we could we could do it you know what i mean we could hold our own and Shit. we definitely go hard on stage we're a little crazy yeah we go as hard as the heaviest band out there i want to say this right now you guys put me in mind of at the drive-in but a yeah. little watered down version of at the drive-in but that's awesome. a good thing Dude, okay that's cool. fucking I like that. hell of a compliment awesome Thank you. <laughs> so Josh Loney directed the music video for Fraud. How was working with him on this? And did he get exactly what you guys were looking for? He's insane in the best way. I <laughs> we love, already said I, everybody's crazy. I'll fucking love Josh. He's that shit. So he's a friend of ours. And uh, well, he's like a BFF of Connor's, our, our guitar player. New friend of ours. And um, he's a musician himself, et cetera. So he's doing a million things all the time. And we, you know. Very talented guy. As an independent band, we kind of have to make the most of situations and we kind of have to be creative. So we were coming down to Nashville to have a rehearsal with Connor and Heather because they live in Nashville before we were going to go on this tour. And we're like, you know what? We're in this rehearsal space with all these lights and all this stuff. Why don't we have, well, ask Josh if he's available and he can come film it and then he can maybe turn it into a music video <laughs> and so that's what happens so he just he comes down he's got another friend named i think rob yeah he's rob. A very nice guy um so it's two, two camera, cameras two just camera angles running around us in circles as we're doing our thing and trying to practice and then lo and behold he just pulls it together and edits it and makes it into a video and yeah. i think the colors are great they're like he's just he's, how it looks in my head he's very capable of doing so much more but we're like okay dude we're, we're gonna have a, a rehearsal room for six hours right. and we're gonna play fraud a million times and you're gonna make it look sick and yeah. he did a wonderful job I think. speaking of a rob my friend rob who's been with me ever since 14 years doing paranormal investigating it's like me and him with cameras running all over the place and oh that's awesome you know, you're setting up gopros and the audio sucks you got to put a, a recorder with another mic up to it and sync it up and Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's 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 crazy. I feel I feel their pain. I feel your pain for it. <laughs> Trust me, because it's not easy. The single Sleepwalker marked a very important moment addressing addiction recovery and delivering a message of hope to fans nationwide. How important is it to continue to address these issues 
in your music for the ones out there who maybe need to hear it? So when we initially wrote Sleepwalker, um, I was just kind of writing it from my point of view, from like my experiences and, you know, selfishly for myself and my own healing and my own like catharsis. It's not selfish. And then um, after playing it live and, and then after releasing it and getting messages from people, meeting fans and, and getting to hear their stories, I realized how prolific the situation is like i don't know if that's the correct word how, how what, it's an epidemic i mean it's like there's it's i'm not sure that there's a single person who hasn't at least known somebody or had a relationship with someone in some way that is struggling you know whether it's yourself or a, a family member or a significant other or a friend or whatever you know that it's like it, it it made me realize like what a need there is for us to just talk about this stuff to deal with the trauma of it all to try to heal from these things um we've we've had the you know honestly it's an honor to have like people say like hey i forwarded your song to my friend who i think maybe could hear this message who like needs to maybe like wake up or like you know believe in themselves try to get sober again whatever it is and so like now this after this, like, yeah, this is a really important part of our message because, wow, there's a need for this. And like, it makes us feel like, like the struggles that I've gone through in my life with sobriety, it gives it purpose. You know, it's like, okay, so maybe it wasn't all just for nothing, just for me to suffer. I'm alive now. I'm thankful for my life and I'm going to try to do something to help others. Hell yeah. And in every room we play every time, there's at least one person who comes up to Nikki and talks to Nikki about their experience and hugs and, you know, thanks her for sharing. And it's like a beautiful scene every single Very time beautiful. we play. And that's just, that's just, you know, always one person who actually comes up to you. I, I mean, mean, there's clearly one, in this room, like, I mean, no one, there's no one that does not relate to, to what she's saying. And there was one lady, one, time um in nebraska that uh when right before we played sleepwalker she held up this plaque and it said 1041 days sober and it was all printed out like on a canvas and everything and she showed oh. it up her name's rebecca shout out to rebecca that was cool yeah. um, but we signed it for her and stuff after the show and it was just cool that you know that that us playing that song live for her could be part of her sobriety journey like that and that she can commemorate that and like continue on you know and, and yeah. look at that plaque and say hey i'm just i'm gonna take today and stay sober, you know? Yeah. You don't know how much, even if you're not a big famous band or anything like that, I mean, you don't know how much of an impact that has on somebody who takes the time out to listen to your music and, and your music affects them just wow. like music affected you when you were young. You know, I'm sure you guys had those, those songs that, man, that's my jam. I have to turn on that to get me through this day. And so now you're on that hot seat. How does that feel now to you guys? It's incredible. I mean, yeah. it, it's kind of heavy in a it way. It's just like an honor, like I think you already mm. said. Yeah, but it's just also like, man, I want to make sure that I am saying the right things and that I'm not spreading a shitty message. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or a message that makes people make bad decisions or makes anything worse, you know? So it's almost yeah. like a responsibility the, at this point. The message lets everyone know they're not alone. And then we go out there and we perform with emotion. And, you know, we perform hard and it it just it shows so like everyone and knows it's real. the energy it, of the it, crowd. it's real we aren't judging anybody you know what i mean like but we're yeah we're we don't want to be preaching at people you're not you trying know? to We've preach been it. There, not like, to drink like you suck it's it's different right. from that yeah and, 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 and the first thing man is is you have to want the help yeah like, absolutely yeah, yeah we are the people you know what i mean we are the people who would party hard before we didn't Right. And but yeah. you are very correct. You have to want to help. Right. And that's hard when you're stop. on the outside of it, when you're somebody that's on the outside looking and just saying why, you know, and that's what sleepwalker is about. Yeah. It's just being that person that really you're, you're literally helpless. You can't, you can just say, try not to die, you know, and it sucks because a lot of times they do. What's the growth musically you've seen from yourselves working on your music from the beginning when you joined Nikki till now that impresses you both the, the most man is there anything that has gotten stronger tighter or even gotten better for you both or the whole band my bass playing has grown exponentially since she has started writing songs and 
Aww. showing me things to play and ideas and stuff. I'll say that because I'm sure. not a bass player, so I'm just like she's like here, how do try this <laughs> <laughs> on, her, on her keyboard, and I'm like okay, all right. And she's my doesn't. wife, so she has to sit down and help me figure it out. And I usually do figure it out, and it's made me so much better, man. Um, yes. And working with some guys in Nashville too, I have to say it, it's been fun. But yeah. you definitely made me better. Oh, thank you. Well, you've made me better too. I, you don't have to say that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I don't need that. throughout this whole process, I do feel like I've I've honed my craft of like writing, um, and you know obviously every day I try to improve and I'm always trying to do better. And I, there's always a way to be better, but I just like, I look back on some of the old stuff and I'm like, okay, I feel pretty confident that I've <laughs> gotten better at this, you know, you I, my singing, I've gotten more confidence to just let her rip. I don't care if it's ugly or weird or like not, not super smooth. It's just kind of odd, rock and roll, crazy, character. whatever. And it just feels good. Cause it's just right. It's just me. It's real. It's me, yeah. you know? It's like Billy Corgan, dude. Could you imagine if he tried singing like somebody else? Oh, yeah, for sure. That'd be so fucked. It'd be so hey, weird. Chad Gray from Mudvayne. Yeah, I love Mudvayne. I hear There's you. another guy. I mean, there's another guy. I don't see him he's singing any. No, no, there's that's, no way. That's who that dude is. So yeah. that's what Nikki's found, and I love that. She's right. Thank that's you. what I've seen you find is singing like other people, kind of to finding your own voice right. and singing like yourself. I'm just saying, oh, well, if it doesn't sound right. Yeah. So I love that. That's <laughs> cool. That's true for sure. Is it a collaborative effort or does one person usually take the lead for writing with you guys? I I take the lead and then, um, but I kind of rely on John. He's like a mirror for me, and but he's like, but it's, it's, it's hard to and judge yourself. You know what I mean? She and does it, something good. I tell her it's good. Yeah. But or she, he'll tell me it's bad if it's bad. Yeah, and, most of the time it's good. So yeah, well, thank you. It's not all the time though. It, it's, it's not that you tell me it's bad, but it's like I can tell like if he's not excited about something, I'm just like, it's probably not it. I'm you easily I mean? excited, so well, you well, know, not, not to. But then there's times when he's like, oh, that's cool, that's special. Like let's let's keep going with that or whatever, you know. And then he helps me to kind of not get too far into my own head because when I do hurt. that, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, but here's the, here's the million dollar question for you both, and I know I know you guys have been doing this for a long time, but as a couple as musicians, has both of you helped each other and pushed each other more as a group? Yes, hundred percent, absolutely. I I don't know that I would even still be doing music if it wasn't for John. He had confidence in me when I didn't have any confidence. I mean, when we were in a band together in L.A., I was just in the background. I just played keys. I barely sang anything. Like I didn't really participate too much in the writing and stuff. And I just like was very shy and have confidence. I was just he, dumb enough to never quit and to uh, get lucky with how good Nikki was. Well, you believe you <laughs> believe he believes in me. You know what I mean? Way before I ever believed in myself. And he's believed that we could do this together. He believed in us and he's just pushed for it. And I would have been like, oh, that's dumb. Like, we should just give it up. Like, we're getting too old, whatever. Like, we this we where are we? We're nowhere. And he was just like, nope, we're doing this. Yeah, <laughs> so, we're, not, we're not stopping. Yeah. We it, haven't. I don't know that I would even be doing this wasn't for you you gotta have that drive and you know when the passion the drive is there and you know when it's real if you yeah. gotta force something then stop right yeah, stop. yeah. i've learned that the hard way yes. <laughs> yeah dude that's for how sure. i feel it's we've always had mo we've always moved forward you know there's right. never come a time where we've been idle unless we had to be or unless or we move backwards we've always moved forward when we've tried so sometimes slowly but the thing is is like you said it's like we'll always be doing music even if we're not able to pursue it on a professional level we'll always be writing music you know we'll always be creating that's just in us so mm -hmm. you know it's is what it is are you just releasing singles as of now or are you wanting to release a full length or eventually maybe an ep down the road so the goal is, I mean, for me, the goal album, is full length record album, maybe like a mini album, like a nine song thing or something like that. Um, it's really just about kind of trying to put the pieces together. Like we're just now kind of building a team, you know, okay. uh, which we're super pumped on, like all the people we that we're working we with. Them. We love them. We 
they believe in us, we trust them, which is a rare find. Um, but we're kind of just trying to strategize and figure out like we don't we don't understand there the music be industry. Few, you know, there, we're trying to figure out what makes sense. There will absolutely be a few more singles before a record drops. It'll yeah. be a while, but that is the goal. Yes. Is to drop a full length and right. and tour as much as we can. And because we have we've got the songs. I mean, almost all the songs we play live are unreleased, brand new stuff. So yeah. we're just kind of trying to figure out how to do this and like whole strategy <laughs> whole lot of background work that goes into this um on top oh, yeah. of other than the music you know it's right that's that's what we do day to day it's it's pretty much plan 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 it's insane same same with me with all my projects everybody's like i love what you do with your your podcast like it's awesome I'm like we want to do that okay but there's stuff behind the scenes that you don't see it's fun to do the interviews but when you have to sit down and break down four interviews and in, in like in one day it's yeah it's a lot you know, it's yeah. a lot and it's very time consuming, which I love. Do not get me wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, who's out there think I'm bitching because I'm not. I absolutely love doing this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, it is time consuming and, and I got to balance everything. And that's the yeah. hard part. It's like you guys with your kid. I mean, it's you got to balance. You got to find that balance space for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So these songs that you have written right now, will these eventually end up on that full length? Or are you guys just want to scratch and just put new ones on there? We've yeah. done two tours now on these songs and they've all gone over quite well with the audience. And I absolutely love yeah, we're playing attached them to live. Them. So we're putting, so we're them, gonna on be putting them all out. <laughs> Eventually it's happening. I, I don't know exactly how <laughs> it is for sure. So with that being said, is, is a track listing placement going to be important for this album release when this happens? Yes, we'll have That's to. Great. Think, we're gonna have to think about all of that. I was gonna say. Hmm. I feel like we could, could probably turn it into like a whole concept album. <laughs> Yeah, Hopefully it could be. Honest. I would like it to be iconic. <laughs> yeah. I want it to be iconic, an iconic <laughs> album. I will not lie. I want it to be done somewhere iconic with someone iconic. But we're gonna have to manifest some of that stuff. <laughs> but we can do it. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. It will be for sure. And I speak of iconic because I'm thinking like, like, uh, like theater. What am I trying to say? Like an or like not an orchestra, but like a. Uh, dramatic yeah the theatrical theatrical yeah. yes yeah big time <laughs> what does each of you bring to this band that just makes that chemistry work because i've seen where chemistry just it has to be that cliche and i know it's a set over and over and over but everybody has to be on that same that same point with you all yeah so i feel like as a band like and as a live band like i would say that all four of us just bring like front person energy <laughs> you know what i mean like because all four of us are like heather has her own project called the heather thomas band uh connor is the lead singer for karma vulture and then john is just a rock the star. bass player for hook like Helmet. um yeah i mean he's like he's <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like the, you know what i mean he, his his influences are like green day and all this like over the top Rock yeah, stuff. I love iconic front men. And then and I'm women. just weird as front hell. Women. Like I've been told that I remind people of the ring because I kind of pop and lock and I get crazy with my hair and stuff. And um, <laughs> so I feel like just as far as live on stage, we all just bring just our nutsness. And then just to the project, you know, I mean, like I am the, the primary songwriter, but you know, John Nikki, is my muse. Nikki's and, a perfectionist. Sometimes yeah. annoyingly so. Yeah, sometimes to the detriment of everybody. So like. I don't know if that influence. I mean, the way that influences me is I know I have to play my shit right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you can also help me kind of just be like, it's good. Like, stop. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, that too. But I also know that, you know, I, I can't slack. I can't be slacking. You know what I mean? And you can slack in a band a little bit, like, and not really know your parts, you know? So I, I know my parts for sure. Because she'll catch me. <laughs> it's true. For all these bands that are out there who thinks it's very simple of the days of going to the bar, getting signed, because those days ain't happening now, folks. Not happening. Do you think it's more harder for a band to even get recognized, even though you can put your stuff out on YouTube, Spotify, everywhere? Do you think it's more harder now for bands to even get a chance? Upcoming bands, I should say. I'm going to say... Yes, but I wasn't there for the old days, so I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe that was hard in its own way. I'm sure it was, but I'm going to say yes, just in the sense that now that it's so accessible for like, you know, people's computers come with GarageBand and it's like real easy to kind of 
get started with it. People can, and then they can upload it. Um, you can use a distributor for like 20 bucks or something and get it on Spotify and everywhere. And so it's just basically harder to find some of the independent bands that maybe are working that much harder or whatever, or are really putting their heart and soul into these things, you know, because there are all, they are out there. There are so many independent bands that are just amazing and doing incredible stuff and great music. And it's just such a sea, you know, everybody's, everybody's on the internet. There's so much of it. Mm. So it's worldwide from anywhere. Yeah. It's like back in the day, if you were going to make it, what would you do? You'd move to LA or you'd move to Nashville or Seattle or wherever. And you'd have to be playing all these shows on sunset or whatever. Live and you'd get a following and that would lead to record deal. Right. At least that's what I that's thought. That's what we thought. That, yeah. That's what I thought. You know, I don't know. I, I was too young back that's then. That's the way behind the music makes That's scene. the way my bands made it. My favorite bands made it. Apparently <laughs> yeah. they just right. got together, played and got a record deal. Right. And now there's like, oh, well, you know, maybe you can go viral or whatever. And then there's a lot of times where the record labels kind of try to make it seem like something went viral, but actually maybe there were millions of dollars put behind that. And so we're yeah. all competing with that kind of stuff. And we're all acting like it's this even playing field, but it really kind of isn't, you know. I have no idea when was easier. I, d I think easier might be the wrong Maybe it's word. it's never been easy, probably. It's probably never been easy, but I don't know, man. The, people don't just go out to find music as much anymore, too, because it's all accessible because of YouTube. So you can just sit right at home TikTok and, and, and find all. your favorite band. You don't have to go to the club. You don't have to go see live music. So, Or just even the record store. You just pick something. You know, I'm like, old you know, school. Yeah. I would say Fuck YouTube. No offense. I know we're on YouTube now, probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, there's a lot of amazing things about YouTube. Yeah, there like, is. You can learn how to make anything. But I would, yeah, I would go for it back in the day. Yeah, John, come on. You know, I'm on YouTube. But, you know, come on. Right, no, I know. We're on YouTube. I know. So am I. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> That's the number one source for music. So am I. So when do you think this album is going to drop? Do you have a foreseeable day, time, maybe? Within a year's time. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be continuing to drop singles that are all probably going to be part of this album Once every over the next months. several months. And then probably, I would say by summertime, maybe we'll get on a summer tour and promote the album. That's going to be the goal right now. Yeah. Yes. So summertime tour promoting the album. We're going to throw hooked like Helen out the window on these next couple of questions. Cause I want to know Nikki and John, I want to know what's, uh, what's up with you guys on musical influence and stuff. Okay. If you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? Okay, so everybody is always like, what, when I say this? But, like, my favorite album of all time is Michael Jackson's Dangerous. I think it's such right. a good album. I think the songs are incredible. It was produced amazingly. It's just got so much angst in it and so much groove and so much vibe and so much feeling. And it's just the time that it came into my life, I needed it. <laughs> and I was real young and it just influenced me so much. And I think it's a masterpiece. <laughs> I, I have no problem with Michael Jackson's music. I'll say this a thousand times, man. Good music is good music. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yep. I mean, it is, and it's pretty universal. So, And he was a bad ass during the day. I don't care. I'm a metal guy, and I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I love that. <laughs> Thanks. Shit. So there's, there's like three that come to mind. So like Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses. Oh, uh, yes. To me from the, uh, what is it? Welcome to the Jungle all the way to, uh, I'm trying to think of the last track. I can't. Oh, think of uh, Rocket Queen. Rocket Queen. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, masterpiece. Love it. Every single second of it. It's just perfect destruction. It's great. Metallica's Black Album is a masterpiece, in my opinion. Yeah. And I, I really love Green Day, dude. So, like, Green Day's American <laughs> Idiot, I think, is a fucking masterpiece, too. So, those three. <laughs> I wore out two cassette tapes of Appetite for Destruction. Hell yeah. Two? Dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, Appetite for Destruction is fucking gnarly. That's so hey, good. Let me tell you how lame I was when I was a kid. And I don't care. I, I'm a man. I'll admit it. I bought a... Well, no. Uh, my mother went to a yard sale. Yes, folks are called yard sales here in Kentucky. Okay. Heard it. So they had a jean vest there, and she bought it for me. 
and I was so into Guns N' Roses, and I couldn't get nobody to do nothing for me to buy me a patch or anything whatsoever. So I was like, aha, I know what I'm going to do. My mom does craft work. And I was like, I want this logo, the Avatar for Destruction cross on the back of that vest. She said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I was like, all right, then let's work a deal out. She said, I'll put Guns N' Roses on it. I said, that's fine. Yeah, I should never have done that. She had this like color glue. It was like paint that stuck on the jacket. Like puffy paint kind of? Kind of in a way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were in different colors. Oh. <laughs> so here I was so excited to come home to find my vest in different freaking colors. And I was like, that's a fucking rainbow and I'm not wearing it. <laughs> Your badass Guns N' Roses <laughs> rainbow shirt. Oh no, the the vest, the jacket, the vest. Yes, yeah. damn. So my cousin, she had a Guns N' Roses shirt. The Avatar for Destruction, the original one, had the lady out on the street and everything. I wore it to school. Ooh, you're gonna get <laughs> was, in trouble for that. I was like in third grade, and, and they they came in, they see my shirt. My my teacher was like, "Can we see you outside, Mr. Marshall?" I was like, "You like my shirt, don't you?" <laughs> Yeah, just like my shirt. And so, like, you're going to turn your shirt inside out, sir. And I went, shit. (laughs) All right, that's fine. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, that's adorable. Life of the of the wild man with Guns and Roses. Hell yeah, rock and roll. Hell yeah, dude. I never wore that vest to school either. Never. <laughs> never, 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 never. That's funny. <laughs> and don't, don't ever do that to your kid. Please, don't ever do that to him. No, we won't. We'll get him his Guns and Roses best. <laughs> if you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, which band would that be, and what show would it be? Oof. These are my two hot ones right here. These are my bangers. Ah. Okay, I would have liked to have been on stage for Prince's uh, Super Bowl performance. I would play keys or bongos or something. <laughs> Two Fighters at Wembley was pretty cool. That yeah, yeah. Anything. Yeah. Care if the Foo Fighters at Wembley Stadium was a sweet show. Ah, uh, uh, is is corn. During Woodstock, an appropriate answer because oh, corn yeah. fucking killed during oh, yeah. Woodstock. Sure. Nirvana's unplugged. Oh, that's a good one. Do you, some harmonies. You've been hella doped out. I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> that would have been epic. <laughs> John and Nikki, how can folks stay in touch with Hooked Like Helen? And how can folks stay in touch with Hooked Like Helen and get all this information, keep up to date with you all? How can they do that? So all of our music, all of the released music is on all of the places that you can find music. So Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, all of that stuff. But if you go to hookedlikehelen.com and sign up for our free VIP membership, you can get some previews of some of this new music that we've been talking about. Um, It's just demo phase stuff right now, but you can kind of get like a little exclusive glimpse at it. And um, we're looking for feedback. So if you want to give us, you know, your two cents on what you think we should drop next or what you want to hear released. You can do that. Um, We're on all of the social media and we're the ones answering the DMS and we love connecting with fans and with music listeners. So find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, threads, YouTube, all of that stuff. And, and, and let us know what you want to hear, what you like, let us know where you are, where we should come to play. Say hi, say hi. We love it. Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up. And you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please go and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link that you want to go subscribe to. If you like what I'm doing, and I hope you guys and gals do. Also, check out Hooked Like Helen. Check out their new release, Fraud, and their previous single, Sleepwalker, plus all their other stuff that they have out. Go check out this band. Give them a fair shot. And Nikki and John, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. Thank you very much, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Very good time. Appreciate it. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. 
Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.